Hi and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how you can create an exploding crowd and by that I actually mean a running crowd of animated people that suddenly explode into a ragdoll model. Now this was inspired by Ed Sheeran's latest music clip for Bad Habits because I'm absolutely fascinated by the computer generated characters that he has running around in that clip so do take a look at that clip as a point of reference okay if you'd like to follow along i've created a starter unity package that you can use and it's at the address on the holistic 3d website that you can now see on the screen i've created this in unity 2020 it uses fairly stock standard mechanism stuff uh, C sharp code there's nothing special in there that should stop it or prevent it from working in later versions or even maybe earlier versions if you can kind of pull apart all the bits and pieces all right so once you open that up you'll get an exploding crowd scene so open that up and you'll see that you've got uh, Remy your character here now I've already programmed the basic AI into this and the AI is going to have him running between two waypoints. If you have a look in the hierarchy, there's two waypoints and there's one there and one back there. Now I've just noticed I've still got these box colliders on there. You could take those away. You don't need them. And anyway, if we press play at this point, you're going to see that the Remy character is going to run between those two waypoints. Now, if you even want to, you could get Remy and duplicate him a few times. He has a nav mesh component on him. So if you have a look in the inspector, there's a rigid body, a capsule collider, an animator, some basic script and a nav mesh agent. The ground plane is a nav mesh and you can explore those in your own time. But if you create a whole bunch of Remy's then you're going to get these guys that just run back and forward between those two waypoints now that's great and when you've got them on mass it looks really really good what we want to do is actually transition between the running animation into a ragdoll so he's basically got to suddenly become a ragdoll which will mean that the ragdoll physics will take over the animations from there so that means we need to create a ragdoll what you'll have to do is get hold of the remy model that is in the project now there's a few models in here one is a prefab of remy that's actually in the scene one has the running animation on it but it's this one here that folds out into all the different components of the model so this is the one that you want so if you drag and drop that into let's put it in the scene so we can actually see it so here over in the hierarchy let's just rename that to ragdoll and now we can turn that into a ragdoll so if you have a look what's in this ragdoll or model, you've got all of the bits and pieces that actually make up the body. And as you click on each of those, you'll see it's got a different mesh for the body, the bottom half, the shoes, the top, those sorts of things. This is a model from Mixamo.com. And I use a lot of those because it's a fantastic resource. If you're not familiar with Mixamo.com, do visit it. You get free models and free animations from there. And I've got a lot of tutorials you'll find on this YouTube channel that actually cover that. So uh, yeah, look for those. Now, the important thing here that actually animates a character when it has animations on it is under this um, Mixum Ridge Hips. Okay, so this is actually the origin of the model or the hip part of the model. This is actually the rig setup. So you can see the legs there, the right and left legs, and then you've got a spine which rolls out all the way up to the top of the head and the shoulders, etc. What we need to do is align all of these parts of the rig with our ragdoll. So first we need to create a ragdoll. So select the top part of the model and then we're going to go game object, 3D object, ragdoll. That will bring you up a create ragdoll. Now it gives you placeholders within here for 
all of those transforms or all those parts of the rig that I just mentioned. So let's bring this over here where we can see it. Sometimes you might find that you get a rig that's a little difficult to figure out which bits are which. So if you just click on them, then it will give you a better idea. Let's see if we can actually get in close. Okay, so if we click on the hips here, the hips are usually the top of the pelvis and that is kind of the root node of your humanoid. And that's what the pelvis here needs to be assigned to. So you just have to drag that across and drop it into there. Then you need the left hip. Now, if you look at the left up leg, click on that, you'll see that it's positioned at that left hip. So we'll use the left up leg for the left hip. Then we've got something called left leg and it is in the knee area. And so we'll use that for the left knee and then if we open that up there's also a foot and we can select that and you'll see that that's the foot the foot rolls out into toes and that but we're not interested in that we're just going to go with the left foot now for the right one it's pretty much the same three transforms okay so the up leg the right leg and then the right foot for the left arm, there's an arm and an elbow part. It's not worrying about the hands or anything. But if you unravel the spine part, you're going to get to the left shoulder. Let's drop that down and you'll see that you get the left shoulder, which is there. The left arm, which starts there. And the left forearm, which is basically where the elbow is. So we'll use the left forearm for the elbow and then the left arm arm for the left arm that means the left shoulder is actually left out in this case but that's okay then we're going to go down the right arm and find the right forearm which will be our right elbow and then our right arm which is our right arm and then we're looking for the middle spine okay so there's three or four spine bits there's that one there's spine one and there's spine two and then up a bit further there is the neck okay so spine one is probably the middle part of the spine and then the head if we go to the neck and open that up there's the head there so let's drag and drop that over onto the head now why am i being so cautious about getting this right because if you don't get it right the first time you have to start from scratch after you hit create you can't come back to this window and adjust things. You've got to actually delete your ragdoll and start again. Or you've got to fiddle around with all the bits and pieces that are about to be created. Okay, so let's hit create. Right, now let's select our hips. Now the ragdoll itself is made up of a whole bunch of rigid bodies and also joints and colliders. So if you actually click down through the hierarchy you'll, you'll see all those things and where they're assigned over in the inspector now the best way to just see if it's actually working properly is to press play and have a look at the ragdoll effect okay so that's basically what the ragdoll is the ragdoll just puts colliders and rigid bodies on your model and then physics takes over mostly gravity in this case and takes the rig and then all the mesh parts that are assigned to that rig with it which is fantastic and that's basically what ragdoll physics is right so now what we have to do is replace a running remy with the ragdoll that we've just created okay once you've got your ragdoll finished drag and drop it down into your assets and create an original prefab from it and then you can actually just delete it out of the hierarchy okay time to get our hands dirty with the code so open up the ai script that you've got in here you'll see the very very basics that's already on the character getting the nav mesh grabbing the uh, nav mesh agent and actually running between the waypoints what we want to do is switch the model that's running with the rag doll that means turning off the game object that this code is on and turning on the rag doll. So what we want to do at the very top here is get the prefab for the rag doll. So public game object rag doll 
prefab and that will allow us to instantiate it when we want to. Now the way I'm going to do this is actually use an invoke to invoke the method. Let's just create the structure for the method first of all. We'll call it void switch ragdoll like that and then up here we're going to invoke it and you want to invoke it after a certain amount of time and I'll just make that random so they don't all invoke to ragdolls at exactly the same time. So ragdoll is the name of the method and then in here I'm going to put a random dot range. Now in the video clip that I made for it I had a long range because I was waiting for them to run around a little bit. Well, when you're testing you want to see it happening pretty quickly so I'm going to put it between two and five seconds that it's going to run that rag doll. The important thing with switching the rag doll with the actual model isn't just turning off the original game object and turning on the rag doll. You want the rag doll to actually be in the same pose as the running one when they do the switch so it looks way more seamless it actually looks like he's running along and then maybe just trips over or whatever so what we're going to do is actually loop through all of the transforms that are on the original and copy those across to the rag doll so let's grab them transform array and we'll call it this trans equals this dot game object dot get components in children which is the transform like that now make sure you use the plural get components so that you get all of them now we want to instantiate our rag doll so game object rag doll equals instantiate the rag doll prefab so we actually create one in the scene and then we're going to get all the transforms from that so transform doll trans equals rag doll dot get components in children transform okay so then we have to just loop through the arrays and copy one from the other so for int i equals zero i is less than this trans dot length i plus plus and what are we copying over we're copying over the position and the rotation we don't need the scale because the models are exactly the same uh, you if you've got different scales and that you could play around with the scales but we don't need to in this particular case so the doll trans at position i dot position equals this trans at position i dot position and then we want to do the same thing with the rotation so we'll just copy that and change it to rotation and rotation okay and then once we've done that we're actually going to turn off this game object so this dot game object dot set active false actually just before that we'll run a destroy on it to make sure it does get destroyed so destroy this dot game object in one minute or actually you could do it immediately or even less than that if you want let's put 0.1 f okay so that's it so save it now let's go back into unity we will grab hold of our original remy let's just delete these remy's here and just worry about the one at the moment okay so drop down the ai script you'll now have a ragdoll prefab drag and drop your ragdoll prefab into that position right there okay so we can now watch this so i'm going to press play and i'll go back into my scene and see well okay so he just became a ragdoll and 
There he is, he's fallen over. And you can see that the original game object's gone and the ragdoll is there instead. Okay, it's sometimes difficult to see. Um, let's duplicate, so Control D, a whole bunch of these Remy's. And it might be easier to actually catch one exploding. Oh, there they are. That's a bit better. Okay, so they've all become ragdolls very quickly and they just fall over, which I sort of thought was a bit boring. So what we can do is go back into here and at the same time that we actually are setting up our ragdoll with the same transformations, we can add a little bit of physics to them as well besides the physics that the ragdoll has with gravity so let's grab all of the rigid bodies that are on the ragdoll so we'll just go rb or rigid bodies equals the rag doll dot get components in children again and we're going to get the rigid bodies so rigid body like that and then we can just do a for each to loop through them all rigid body are in rbs and then you can pretty much add any kind of force you like in here so i'm going to add r dot add force of the forward movement that the model is going in initially so this dot trans Form dot forward multiplied by 1000 so if it's running along in one direction and he actually becomes a ragdoll he's actually gonna flop forward in that particular direction which is a little bit more realistic than him just sort of suddenly stopping in the one place the other thing I'm gonna add a force because this is actually in that video clip that I showed you is a this dot transform dot up just to add a little bit of interest by flying up in the air a bit and another one that I actually really like too is the add explosive force. And for this, you have to give it an explosive force. Now, I just put a little bit in there, so 200. It needs a center position for the explosion. So this dot transform dot position. And it also needs a radius of how much it's going to sort of explode out. So let's say two. Two is about the size of our actual character, two meters that is. Okay, so let's now save this and we should get some more interesting results. So let's uh, press play and we'll have all those same Remy's we had before. And whoa, there we go. Way more interesting. So that's it pretty much. Um, you can make a whole bunch more Remy's, as many as you kind of like or that your computer can stand running. Um, and watch them run explode and rag doll uh, which is fun <laughs> okay so that's that's the tutorial um experiment with that have fun add more characters uh, i've got lots more nav mesh tutorials on creating crowds with lots of resources that you can grab also from my h3d learning website in the ai course you could integrate that into here as well and um, all those models also, go into Mixamo, grab some more models and, you know, just do something fun with them. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and check out my other YouTube tutorials. And I hope to see you real soon on my h3dlearn.com site.